A car's electrical system is pretty sturdy most of the time, but even so, most of the components are serviceable, meaning they are bound to fail eventually. Unfortunately, most of the time, it fails unannounced, possibly leaving you stranded. But if you notice a voltage drop and your car doesn't stall, consider yourself lucky as that's an early warning sign not many people get. The five potential reasons your battery voltage drops while driving are an old battery, a faulty alternator, loose or corroded connections, the belt and the tensioner, or a voltage regulator. Some of these are more likely than others, so stick around to see how you can check each with their other symptoms. 1. Faulty Alternator A faulty alternator is the most likely cause because it's directly responsible for your car's voltage level while driving. However, it's not a simple component, so figuring out if it's faulty, especially with intermittent symptoms, will be tricky. There are ways you can test your alternator, but with the symptom at hand, it's best left to professionals. That's because there is a chance that the simple test we will describe won't show any issues. Also, a replacement alternator is not cheap for any car, and even one for a Honda Civic will set you back over $300. Labor costs are usually insignificant compared to the parts price ranging between $50 to $100, so I would avoid replacing it at home. With that, let's see some other symptoms you might have noticed with a faulty alternator and how you can test it. Faulty alternator symptoms. Engine stalling. Dim or bright interior and exterior lights. Malfunctioning infotainment system. Difficulty starting the engine. Whining or buzzing coming from the engine bay. Drained battery. Overcharged battery. How to test an alternator. The only tool you need to test an alternator is a multimeter. 1. Set your multimeter to 20 volt DC. 2. Before starting the engine, place the black probe on the negative battery terminal and the red probe on the positive battery terminal. 3. The multimeter should read around 12.4 to 12.6 volts. 4. Then start the engine and measure again. Now the voltage should read between 14 to 14.2 with all the auxiliaries off. Anything over that means the alternator is overcharging and below that it's undercharging. 5. Now turn on as many auxiliaries as you can, radio fan, lights, etc. The voltage should stay above 13.7 or so. If it doesn't, the alternator is faulty. 2. Faulty voltage regulator. Still sticking with the alternator. Only this time we are looking at a specific component. All car alternators have a voltage regulator, which does what the name implies. In other words, it regulates how much the alternator will charge the battery at any given moment, depending on the electrical load. If this part begins to fail, you will see erratic voltage spikes or drops coupled together with all the other symptoms you get with a faulty alternator. That said, the voltage regulator is cheaper to replace so it's a good idea to test it first. A replacement voltage regulator can be as cheap as $30 and up to $100 for the average car. However, to replace it, you need to disassemble the alternator in most cases. Still, you can find more about how to replace it in this article. Otherwise, you will have to pay around $100 to $150 for labor. Voltage regulator symptoms. Flickering or pulsating lights. Inconsistent idle speed and engine performance in general. Infotainment system and instrument cluster issues. How to test a voltage regulator. 1. Set your multimeter to 20 volt DC DCV. 2. Place the black probe on the negative battery terminal and the red one on the positive terminal. 3. Start the engine and turn all the auxiliaries on. Lights, radio, fan, fog lights, seat heaters, etc. 4. The multimeter should read no less than 13.8 volt. 5. Now have someone lightly push on the gas pedal and keep the engine speed at around 2,000 to 2,500 RPMs. 6. The voltage should not go over 14.2 at any moment. If it does, the voltage regulator is bad. 3. Old battery. Ideally, it would be best if you replaced your battery every 3 to 5 years at most. If you know that it's been that long before you got a new one, it's most likely that an old battery is causing you these issues. The voltage and charge of an old battery will fluctuate drastically in all conditions, meaning you might find the battery doesn't have enough power to start the engine. And after you jumpstart it, it works fine for the next couple of days or weeks. That charge fluctuation can also happen while driving, leading to a voltage drop. A replacement battery will set you back around $50 to $250, depending on what size your car needs. For example, a battery for a 2014 Honda Civic is around $150, while a battery for a 2019 BMW 530i is close to $250. Also, most auto parts stores will replace the battery for you, and you might even get a discount if you leave them your old battery. Old battery symptoms, corroded battery terminals and posts, deformed battery case, most commonly bulging, dripping, rotten egg smell, leaking signs on the side, check engine light, malfunctioning electronics, Battery drains overnight. How to test a car battery. 1. Set your multimeter to 20 volts DC DCV. 2. Place the black probe on the negative battery terminal and the red probe on the positive terminal. 3. The multimeter should read around 12.4 to 12.6 volts. 4. Have someone start the car while you keep watching the multimeter and noting how much the voltage drops while the engine is cranking. 5. 
The battery is likely faulty if the voltage drops below 10 volts before the engine starts. 4. Old Auxiliary Belt and Tensioner How long an auxiliary serpentine belt lasts depends on a lot of factors, but in ideal conditions, it should see 100,000 miles before it fails. However, an old belt might still work most of the time and only occasionally slip, causing a voltage drop. The same can happen with an old belt tensioner, as they can sometimes get stuck, leading to a slipping belt, and consequently, a voltage drop. The reason I mention the two together is that it's best to replace both at the same time, because labor costs will be almost the same, and both are usually included as a kit when you buy them. The complete set costs $100 to $300, but for a Civic, you can expect to pay around $150 and $100 for an F-150. Labor costs also vary, but it's around $50 for the average car and around $80 for something more premium, like an Audi. Auxiliary belt and tensioner symptoms. Squealing noise from the engine bay, especially when the engine is cold. Issues with the power steering. AC isn't working efficiently. Engine overheats occasionally. Electrical issues. How to inspect an auxiliary belt. One, the first you should do is a visual inspection. Specifically, you are looking for cracks on the belt. Two, the second is pulling on the belt to check if it's loose. It shouldn't have more than half an inch of slack without applying too much force. 5. Loose or corroded electrical connections Even though electrical connections are the least likely to cause the issue at hand, it's still possible. Plus, it's fairly easy to check. So, let's jump straight into all the things you should inspect. Battery terminals and posts. Check if these are corroded, and if they are, Remove the terminals and clean them, either with a wire brush or some sandpaper. Also, use contact cleaner. Alternator positive wire. First, locate the positive wire on your alternator. It's usually red and covered with a runner cap. Try pulling on the terminal to see if it's loose and check if it's rusted. In both cases, remove the terminal and clean it with contact spray and a wire brush before tightening. Loose ground connections. Follow the negative cable of your battery and see where it ends up. It's usually connected to the body of the car somewhere in the engine bay, usually the firewall or strut tower. See if it's loose or corroded and clean it with some contact spray before tightening. Alternator connector. Most alternators have an electrical plug slash connector. These are usually waterproof, but since they can often be exposed to weather, salt, and different chemicals, it's a good idea to inspect them. Disconnect the plug and clean both sides with contact cleaner spray, an old toothbrush, and a wire pipe brush for the connector terminals. To summarize what we talked about in this video, in 90% of cases, a faulty alternator is what causes a voltage drop while driving. That's not good news since it is the most expensive part to replace of all the possible issues. But I would recommend testing the voltage regulator first. If it turns out it was the voltage regulator, you will save several hundred dollars on parts and labor. Otherwise, I would first check all the electrical connectors, because it doesn't require any special tools, and you can do it in five minutes. As for other potential causes, make sure to check all the symptoms and how to test each of them to avoid replacing a healthy component. I hope this video helped. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and follow so you don't miss any of my videos.